My name is Mark Jager. In this six-part tutorial, I'm explaining and demonstrating time-lapse using a RED DSMC2. This is part two. This method for time-lapse capture is easy as it utilizes the normal continuous recording mode just at one frame per second. 180 degree shutter speed, one half second is used. The result is a 24 to one time compression video. Now you need an assembled DSMC2. Here's a close up of the camera showing my configuration. I assume you know how to set up basic parameters. So set the red code compression and resolution to your choice. Set white balance for your lighting. Set the shutter speed for one half second but notice that the display does not update right away. That's okay for now. Set aperture to something like F8 and ISO to 800. Now watch what happens when we go down to one frame per second. The shutter speed updates and shows the half second we selected a few moments ago. Notice also that we don't have a good black shade. The E is red. You briefly saw auto calibration flash on the screen. The E turns green. This happened because I have auto calibrated this camera. The camera selected an appropriate black shade for me and now I'm good to go. Be aware that the DSMC2 slows its monitor refresh rate according to the selected frames per second. When you focus, select a mid-range frame per second so that the focusing will not have lag between moving the focusing ring and what the monitor displays. Now, let's go to the field. One, two, three. Doggone, I thought that would work. One, two, three. Because there turned out to be a lot of background noise here, I've done this part in voiceover. I verified that the parameters set in studio are still in place. Here's the scene as a 24 to one time compression time-lapse video using 180 degree one half second shutter. The recording is a 16 bit raw file that allows significant latitude for grading, Ken Burns effects, stabilization, etc. Here's the same scene recorded at 90 degree one quarter second shutter. I'm showing this because the motion blur here is more to my liking. You'll need to choose the look that you like. The method in this part two is the simplest DSMC2 method to set up. It's admittedly an elementary technique, but it yields a good result. Stay tuned for part three, where the flexibility for time lapse goes up substantially. Thanks for watching.